Hello, welcome to the video. Today we're going to go a little less retro and look at something I got for Christmas. And I was fortunate enough to get three Pi 5s. I also got three different cooling solutions. So I got an active cooler, uh, the Raspberry Pi active cooling case, and I also got the Flurk, which is a passively cooled aluminium case. So the Pi 5 here looks just like any other Pi. Uh, it's got the same form factor, it's just much more powerful. So yeah, this is a really, really nice bit of kit. And uh, what I want to know is just how far you can go with a passive cooling. Um, I'm, I don't mind fans, it's just the smaller the fan, the more whiny they get. Um, so yeah, the Flurk can apparently cool this passively. So let's have a, let's have a look at the Flurk case in a minute. The Pi 5 will thermal throttle at 80 degrees and at 85 degrees it's its maximum temperature where it will aggressively thermal throttle. So basically if you can keep it under 80 degrees you can run the Pi 5 at full chat all day long. Not that anyone's really going to do that unless you're doing something really intensive with it and then you're probably going to have to think well do I actually need a pie or something a bit more beefy. Anyway little digression now so this is the flirt case so as you can see it's a very nice looking case this is aluminium and I actually have these for the Pi 3 and the Pi 4 so what it is is a piece of aluminium and this part here contacts the CPU core and it does so with a, um, a thermal pad there and then the plastic case on the bottom holds it in position. Essentially, this whole case turns into a heat sink. And once it gets up to its maximum temperature, it will just radiate off. So that, that does depend a little bit on, you know, what the ambient temperature is in the room to how well it performs. But what we're going to do is we're going to fire this up. And I'm going to use a piece of code to log the settings every second to a text file or CSV file. And then I'm going to put them into a spreadsheet and then we can see the cooling curves. Now, you can run the Raspberry Pi 5 without any cooler. Um, they don't recommend it, but you can do it. Because it, it's got this inbuilt mechanism where, like I just said, it, it will thermal throttle. The fire, it will just take its speed down to, to reach a, a safe working temperature. So, yeah, let's get this all powered up and uh, jump into the Pi desktop and have a look at that. Okay, so here you can see we're on the desktop. Uh, we've got HTOP running in the top right, uh, an empty terminal in the bottom right. And on the left, we've got our little script. And that's going to record continuous values every second from the CPU uh, temperature register. And we're going to record it to a CSV file so we can play it back. So I'll just show you that now. I've, I'm running this on a bare board with no cooling. So as it's running now, you can see there's no real load on HTOP. So if I just go uh, run, now you can see this is what it's recording uh, currently. Um, it's, gets, yeah, it's what, 56, 57 degrees. It will get to 600 and the first number is the index. And it checks that and in the loop before it stops. If you look at the bottom of the code here, so it says, right, when we start, i equals one. Uh, when it enters the while loop, it's while it's less than 605. Um, I just picked that as an arbitrary number above 600 for, you know, 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so it checks to see if it hits 602, it breaks out. And that's actually 601. Um, and then it sleeps for one second and then does the same loop again. So if we look in our text file here, um, we can open up text editor. These are the values we've just logged. So let's just clear them out, ready. So right now, without any kind of um, cooling at all, we've got 56, 57 degrees on idle. And that's just a bare board running on the side. So. Okay, let's power it down. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to start our test with the Raspberry Pi official case and the case is where it sits inside and the fan blows on top of the um, the main CPU die but doesn't actually contact it um, so yeah we'll try that one first right so here we are we've done all the testing um, it's taken a little while and uh, yeah I've got a spreadsheet of results all prepared now so we're on the Pi um, this is my 8 gig one uh, this is actually in the flirt case right now so we can see up here that we're at 48 degrees now if I load up the results Let's just bring that back up there we go let's start off with the no cooler so this is a bare board we can see that around 10 seconds uh, it's quickly just shot up hit the thermal throttle there's a little step there and then it's got to 85 and it's aggressively throttled and it's managed to hold that all the way along and as you can see the average is 84 so 85.4 um, yeah so it's sat there the whole time on its maximum amount so you can see it's really just throttled right back but that's to be expected um, a Raspberry Pi is never in normal use going to be using all four cores to the maximum amount and that's the thing to hold on to with this test it's purely synthetic so if we move over to the official case here we go we can see that in the first sort of 10 or 20 seconds, the temperature is shot up like you'd expect because you're going from idle to using all the cores. And then the fan's kicked in, but the fan hasn't kicked in enough to, to stabilise it. So there's a bit of an overshoot where it gets up around about 75, 76, then starts to come down. And then it settles out here for the rest of the 10 minute run at 73.4. That's a pretty good result. And this Raspberry Pi official case I didn't put the little stick on heatsink on it and I didn't do that purely because if I changed the case I didn't want to have to claw off the heatsink. Let's move over to the next one. Now this is the Raspberry Pi heatsink and fan. Let me see if I can... I'm doing this as I talk so bear with me a second. Let me just open up a web page. There we go. Um, What's it called? It is a uh, active cooler. Uh, Raspberry Pi active cooler. Now I'm bringing up a picture of this um, so you can see what I mean. This little heatsink board here. I mean this is really good it's got it's got these two spring-loaded uh, PCB clamps like you get like on an, on an Intel CPU that really hold it down on the board hard um, yeah it's nice really nice and the cooling effect is superb especially as the rest of it is all a big lump of aluminium so you know there's going to be a bit of thermal mass there so let's just drop this out a minute and Go back to our cooling results. Uh, now with that said, you, that explains why this has done what it's done. So you can see here there's quite a broad slope that takes a long time to get up to temperature. Um, so it really, it's at about a three minute mark um, that is finally thermally saturated. And what I mean by that is that aluminium has got to absorb enough energy to start radiating it. And that's what's happened. So as it starts to level out, you can see that it's gone up here. And it's really about the five minute mark where it's fully stable and it's doing its business. The average temperature here is far lower. That's 60 degrees or 60.64. Uh, that's, that's brilliant. That's really done a good job on it. Um, and that was on full load as well, just like all the others. So that's uh, it's a really nice cooler. Um, let's move over to the Flerk. Now, now with what I just said about the active cooler, you can see what is happening here. Clearly, the massive amount of aluminium has got much more thermal mass to heat up before it starts radiating. So it's absorbing over a longer time period. Now, as you can see here, immediately, 
you've jumped sort of 10 degrees, bam, over the, like 10 seconds. And then slowly, as it's absorbing the heat, it slowly rises and rises and rises. And it tops out, well, the average can't really be used on this one because it's, it's a curve. It's not actually got any sort of flat line to it. So it tops out at around 62 degrees. But, and this is the big but now, the flerk hasn't reached thermal equilibrium at that point. It takes much, much longer. So what I did was I re-ran the test, but for 30 minutes. And this is the result. So over 30 minutes, you can see that it's, it's much more of a curve and it keeps on climbing until it gets to here. And this is round about the ooh, 1550 seconds. So that's what, 20 minutes or so, 20, yeah. There it levels out. Now this is what I recorded for, but I actually left the whole thing running for over an hour. So I, I know it's firmly stable at around 78 degrees. Um, and that's very close to the, the start of the thermal throttling band, but it doesn't actually enter it. So yeah, as far as I can see, this flirt case is brilliant. It heats up a lot, and when you, when you get to 78 degrees, trust me, you're not picking that up. But, I mean, how many computers do you pick up when they're running? Unless it's a laptop, not many. So, yeah, it's around about 78 degrees, fully firmly saturated, and it manages to hold it. This is inside with normal heating on, so ambient temperatures are, I don't know, 20 degrees maybe, uh, maybe a bit warmer. So this is inside a normal house, and that's what it's doing. And it's, it's firmly stable at 78 degrees. And that's, that's plenty. Because when you're using your pie normally, you're not going to be anywhere near it. Nowhere near it. Now, if I close this down, we can see here right now that I'm actually at 40, 45, 47 degrees. This, this is normal. Um, there's not much of a load on it, as you can see in HTOP there. And the frequency hasn't even ramped up for anything demanding. So, yeah. In normal operation, it may get up to 60, 65. Or if you're really hammering it, maybe even 70. But you, you're not going to actually be running all four cores maxed. You're just not doing it. So, yeah, if I, yeah, if I just close that down for a second. Yeah, I, I really like the float case. It can definitely do its job. The reason why I was sceptical in the beginning was it looks like they've taken the Pi 4 die and just used that as their, you know, the Pi 5 case and just cut a, a power switch into it. So I, I was a little bit sceptical that it could do it without contacting the other um, components as well. But it is doing the job. And it's doing it well. So yeah. I'm going to wrap this video up now. And uh, I'm going to say check out my compadres. Uh, in the video description. Um, they've got their own channels. And they've got some good stuff they do. So have a look for them. And uh, thanks for watching.